Welcome back to the show. Good morning, Kenya continues. My name is Vivian Dagwa. Now, today on Matters Health, we will be looking into home intensive care. What is home intensive care all about? How effective is it? Is it more expensive or is it cheaper than having your patient at a hospital? I am joined by Mr. Rajiv Mathu, who is here to help us delve into that topic. Mr. Rajiv, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kind of, uh, kindly tell us your, a bit about your background. Well, uh, I have for the longest time been in the technology sector, in the information technology sector, mm -hmm. until about uh, seven years ago uh, when I uh, got into the healthcare and the medical sector now, mm -hmm. uh, focused on providing critical care at home. Mm -hmm. So I've uh, originally from India, lived in the UK for about 27 years, and then back into India, launching this company called Critical Care Unified, All which right. provides healthcare services in the home and focused specifically on critical care, okay. patients who need intensive type of care on a medium to long term basis. Mm -hmm. Why did you get into um, healthcare? Well, when I looked at the marketplace in India at that point in time, and generally looking around, in countries where uh, the healthcare systems need upgradation and, and uh, are evolving, uh, I found that the need for care or healthcare outside the hospital was immense. Mm -hmm. uh, hospitals are limited, beds are limited, and therefore there is the general problem of locking of beds in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So if there was adequate resources that were deployed to actually provide uh, high quality and hospital grade care in the home, then there would be a big need. And so it was. Uh, so in uh, end of 2016 is when we launched uh, what we call Critical Care Unified, the company. And uh, uh, we have now uh, operating in about eight cities of India, uh, did about 28,000 patients. And every day we run in excess of about 150 patients in their homes who are suffering with some critical ailment or the other. Okay. The other aspect was having come from a technology background, uh, what I did feel was uh, that leveraging technology, one could expand this and take it deeper into parts of countries where this care may be required, mm -hmm. whether it is India or whether it's Kenya, or whether it is some other part of the country or the world, uh, there would be immense need in smaller cities where people do not have access to you know uh, big hospitals and other type of care but with a technological model that can be implemented they have access to the best of clinicians not just in that country but around the world okay. so that was the vision with which we got into healthcare. all right someone may be wondering what exactly is home care um home intensive care and what exactly does it entail what is the work all right so um first of all <clears throat> any patient who requires on a medium to long-term basis support that may be of a quote-unquote intensive nature like mm -hmm. for example mechanical ventilator support or a person may have gone for an acute problem in a hospital mm -hmm. and then has been discharged from the ICU of that hospital into the home but they still need care for example you know they have uh, what is called tracheostomy or they have rise tube feeding because you know their gastro system cannot support the normal feeding methods etc or very high oxygen support that may be required now for that reason they don't need to necessarily stay in the ICU of the hospital and lock up that bed whereas similar service can be provided in the home and what we have done is to be able to provide the whole complement that's why we call it all sort of unified mm -hmm. uh, the medical equipment right from you know various types of beds that may be required in the home that can be provided uh, equipment whether it's a ventilator or the BiPAP machines or CPAP machines or oxygen concentrators uh, all of that along with what is central to care at home is the nursing uh, care that is being provided there. Mm -hmm. So there are various grades of nurses, uh, general nursing, there is critical care nursing, along with, or with, a, with, with interaction with a doctor who then oversees the patient. So a virtual hospital environment 
is created in the home to be able to provide care so that the patient is in familiar surroundings, the family is around, uh, it's, uh, you know, devoid of, uh, you know, like in an ICU, there is a high risk of infections because so many people in a closed atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So all of those benefits lend themselves to providing care in the home, but it's the whole package which is put together in terms of critical care at home. I get that. So for someone who's been, uh, who's now having home care, what does this mean for the caregiver? And by caregiver, I mean the family members who are staying there with the person. Say I am the wife to, or my husband rather, has a condition, you know, is terminally ill and he needs home care. So does it mean that my life stops kind of like, can I go, uh, can I go on with my day to day or do I need to be there throughout? Well, actually it is uh, quite a benefit uh, as we see and as we have seen over the last seven years, uh, there's many a family who have actually come and told us that it's been really helpful uh, because typically both husband and wife, uh, they go out to work. Uh, there is this work of the children. Uh, they got to do the school runs, take them to football sessions, etc., etc., all of that. Yeah. And with a professional, quote-unquote, caregiver mm -hmm. who's in the home, which could be a nurse or it could be a complement of a nurse and a general duty assistant, for example, mm -hmm. uh, who's taking care of the ailing member of the family, then more time is actually released to the family member or the caregiver of the family. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, what we have also seen that over a period of time, if it is sort of a medium to long-term uh, care that is being provided, the, 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 the family member or caregivers become more proficient, you know, and there are times when they are able to handle some procedures themselves in the home, yeah. So overall, it actually reduces the stress and the amount of time they have to give focus on care of that family member. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number of them have uh, come and told us that. Uh, and uh, so over a period of time, it's good for the patient, it's good for the family, is what we generally feel about home care. And yeah. that is our experience so far. Okay. So do we have a nurse throughout uh, in that particular home where there's someone who's undergoing uh, home intensive care? Do we have a nurse throughout? Well, <clears throat> in the case of, if when you say intensive care, mm -hmm. uh, by definition it means close watching, mm -hmm. right? So there could be, uh, uh, you know, a nurse who would be for 12 hour shift for example uh, and another nurse comes in for another 12 hour shift mm -hmm. or it could be you know a nurse who's uh, at home in home service uh, so there is horses for courses depending on the nature of ailment and depending on the nature of care that that particular patient requires uh, the complement of resources or caregivers is then appropriately constructed so that they're able to uh, give what is required in terms of care for the patient mm. but typically for intensive care uh, it is almost necessary that a nurse is available around the, <coughs> around the clock whether it is two of 12 hours or one of 24 hours living uh, that depends on the on the condition there okay so you are the executive chair for critical care unified which is based in india what is your plan in kenya what are you doing in kenya at the moment well, uh, we have been looking at Kenya for the last one year or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me just step back. Just the way we looked at in India and, and found that there was a big need for what we term as out-of-hospital care. Because, uh, you know, uh, typically it was whether you have any ailment uh, or any fall, you just straight away go to the hospital. And what it does is it puts pressure on the hospital. Mm -hmm. So we saw that there was a need to provide care which was outside the hospital. And of course, the reason why we have gotten into critical care and have a focus on it, because the need for critical care is even more profound with the, with the limited number of ICU beds that are available, even in a country like India. Uh, they're close to about 100,000 ICU beds, you know, with a large population there. Uh, and uh, I'm told from whatever data that just north of uh, 500 ICU beds in Kenya, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why the focus on critical care. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> more importantly, uh, uh, the whole plan is to be able to start from a hub 
like Ni uh, Nairobi, and then be able to expand and take these services deeper into the country like we are doing it in India as well. So today we are in eight cities, but the whole plan is to cover about 30 cities in India because this care or this service should be available to people who are deeper in and who do not have access to to maybe uh, higher grade facilities in a metropolitan location. So the plan is quite similar uh, to start off from Nairobi uh, and then be able to expand it into other cities to develop you know the resource base for instance what is very critical you mentioned about nurses and we see a, a excellent potential for nurses here in Kenya to develop them for the local market maybe for even global markets we take them and train them in India or some other parts of the world and then bring them back so there's a whole model which is to be able to try and contribute to building a robust out of hospital healthcare infrastructure in Kenya, which is where our uh, vision is and which is where we have set our goals for. Okay. You have mentioned um, something to do with nurses. So does this mean that you are going to be training nurses from scratch, from scratch rather, right here in Kenya for this specific um, program? Well, <clears throat> currently from what we have seen, uh, there is a, a reasonable uh, facility and capacity to be able to train nurses and bring them up to maybe say a general nursing level mm -hmm. where we will be able to contribute is in upgrading the nursing caliber to critical care so you know all of the procedures that need to be done in the home from a critical care perspective we would like to put in modules of training and work with various uh, organizations here in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, some of them which I have met and you know and be able to cooperate with them and create a module which further upgrades their nursing capability towards critical care and 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 the basics are already being done so we don't anticipate we'll get into right from scratch but if there be a need then surely that is something that we could look at mm -hmm. but at the moment We'd rather that upgrade the facilities uh, or upgrade the, the course modules uh, and, uh, and, and be able to bring them up to a certain level for critical care. Someone may be asking, do we have enough resources for this type of services uh, in the country? Our, our belief is that there is. <laughs> in fact, uh, there is uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, resource uh, from whatever data that I have, we have got so far. Uh, the the attitude, the work ethics, they all lend themselves for this kind of healthcare mm -hmm. services which are in the home. Because uh, while in a hospital setting, there are a number of systems and processes that are in existence. Uh, in the home, the, the nurses or the caregivers have to be even more compassionate. They have to then understand the overall environment of the family, of the dynamics that <coughs> prevail there, and be sensitive to all of that. So it's going to be a combination of what we say uh, core clinical skills plus soft skills. Mm -hmm. right because they're going to be dealing with the patient going to be dealing with the family they've got to blend into that so it's that overall you know complement of of skills that will make the caregiver most appropriate but there are enough and more and the attitude uh, of uh, people is uh, very very welcoming and therefore we think that that infrastructure can really be supported and grown in the country. Mm -hmm. When are you planning to launch in Nairobi? Because I believe the offices are already there. It's just a matter of launching. So when are you launching? So we've uh, uh, been uh, here for, uh, you know, for the last one year, as I said. Uh, we've invested a lot of time in researching, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, in looking at the market and what the needs of the market are. Uh, it's not like one size doesn't fit all. Uh, so 100% of what we are doing in India is not what's going to be relevant here. It's, again, tweaking for the country and the needs of the country. So we are here uh, about third or fourth week. We've got the office. We've got registered, all of that. And uh, the core team will get operational by about third or fourth week of this month. And that is why I had come here to meet with uh, uh, potential uh, partners, to meet with other, uh, uh, you know, members of the healthcare ecosystem in the country so that we are able to very closely monitor and launch those services which are relevant and will be consumed by the people of Kenya. Will we, will we have these services um, in other cities or in other counties here in Kenya? 
Absolutely, absolutely, over a period of time. So, in fact, right now, as we see, we are working on looking at what could be the clusters that can emerge. So, as I mentioned to you earlier, that we have a model which is a hub and a spoke. So, mm -hmm. we will build a few hubs around the country in the various counties, and then services can be deployed into various other cities. So, there is a broad plan right now, but unless we are on the ground and actually started implementing, uh, the plan will emerge only after that. All right. As we wind up, what are some of the range of services that you provide or you will be providing in the country? Okay, so if I just look at, you know, there's a cross-section of ailments, you know, that prevail. Mm -hmm. So, for example, just to throw some examples here, uh, post-stroke care, very important, where you need the care in the home, you need to go through rehabilitation uh, you know, post-stroke, uh, mm -hmm. there is late-stage cancer patients in, you know, third category, fourth category, whatever, and, uh, and uh, they need that palliative care. Uh, so, across these ailments, whether it's in, uh, in uh, neurology or in oncology or in a lot of pulmonary long-term oxygen support, so there is care in those areas that is provided. Uh, what I might like to add here is that based on our interaction with the primary physician mm -hmm. or the doctor who's treating that patient or mm -hmm. has treated the patient so far, we prepare what is called a care plan. Yeah? And that is like sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. Whatever is being done is as per the care plan that has been prepared. But the care plan is a living document because things can change from day to day or within the day, etc., etc., you know, based on the condition of the patient. So, uh, uh, so, so uh, uh, a range of these services, but centered around good quality nursing care and with whatever other procedures that may be required in terms of, you know, like uh, oxygen support, in terms of rice tube feeding, peg feeding, etc., etc., uh, ventilator support, BiPAP. So it's the wide range of services that can be provided, typically which might be available in an ICU, but not acute care, right, which is only for the ICUs, and that is to be done in the hospitals and not in the home. Uh, no surgical procedures, okay. yeah, so those would be only for uh, uh, a hospital where uh, operation theatres, etc., etc., are available. Uh, we have also been able to now provide a fair number of, uh, of uh, tests that can be done in the home. So, for example, we have portable ECGs, okay. uh, portable ABGs, we can do x-rays at home, etc., etc. So, as much as possible to take it into the home for the comfort of the patient and for better care. Okay. Is it cheaper or more expensive in, in terms of pricing? Well, uh, you know, pricing is something, what are you comparing with? So if, you, if we compare with what one pays in a hospital, mm -hmm. it's very definitely much cheaper. So mm -hmm. what we have found that if we take an example of a full-blown ICU, uh, and the cost of ICU in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a hospital in India, we are definitely lower than 40% of that cost when we implement that in the home, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and uh, obviously, our whole model is to be able to, the moment we say we've got to take it deeper into the country, we we'll take it to smaller towns, then it has to be very com competitive and affordable for the people. And we believe that with some innovative models that we have built and are building together with implementation of technology, which means remotely there are um, clinicians or doctors or specialists who can actually monitor the condition of the patient, be in interaction with a nurse, which is by the bedside, and be able to, that blended model is what is going to make it very affordable and competitive for people over a period of time. Yeah. So that's what our, uh, our uh, vision is. Uh, that's the goal that we're working towards and and that's what we are hoping to achieve again like i said over a period of time as we move along okay you have catered for about thirty thousand people already you know as the ccu critical care unified um could you please tell us just one success story as we tell people goodbye uh okay uh there are uh, uh, quite a few you know um <clears throat> so uh, there have been patients who, who have had uh, a lot of comorbidities, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, people who have had, let's say, uh, chronic kidney diseases, right, who had uh, problems of hypertension, uh, 
acutely diabetic and all of that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, uh, and, um, and, and during COVID, they also got infected with the COVID virus. So it was a very complex kind of a case that we needed to deal with uh, in the home. Yeah? But what we were able to implement was that we got in a multidisciplinary team of doctors who were reviewing the condition of the patient. Okay. So because we, we, we are, we are uh, you know, we're going to be able to do it over technology, it will be easy to get specialists, say somebody for uh, nephrology, for example. You know, So there will be a nephrologist, there will be a cardiac person, there will be maybe a pulmonary person, etc., etc. And they together then work towards and work with the nursing staff on that. And it took um, uh, for this person uh, to be, you know, she didn't want to go to the hospital. She said, no, I'm going to be right here. And mm -hmm. if, whatever you can do, you do it here. And so we consulted all the specialists, etc. And they said if the right type of equipment is provided, if the right type of nursing care is provided, if there is doctor oversight. So if complement of all these services are provided, then you can take care of the patient in the home. Mm -hmm. And then it took a little over a month. And then she was uh, gra slowly and gradually recovered from that situation and got over COVID, uh, needed therapy after that. So physiotherapy was provided, you know, all of that. And some neuro conditions, so there were neurotherapists as well. So it took maybe a certain period of time, but she was able to recover to the point where uh, she was able to do her work, what she wanted to do in her life. And Wonderful. she was 80 plus years. <laughs> oh, really? That is really nice to hear. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajiv, for honoring us with your time. We appreciate that you came on board and just let us in on this conversation. Thank you very much. And we look forward to being here and, and contributing to the healthcare uh, facilities in this country. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, that is all we had on Matters Health. I believe that you have gotten to learn a thing or two on Matters Critical Care Unified. On behalf of everyone who has made Good Morning Kenya a success, we wish you a good day. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. I have been your host, Vivian Dagua.